Hi, this is Bart Poulton, and, the, and this video is a walkthrough from Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way, the third edition. And we're going to be looking at the second exercise in this one. If you go to his webpage, learnpythonthehardway.org, and then you can click on this link, read the free HTML online, or you can also click on this little uh, tree diagram right here. That'll take you to the uh, table of contents, which is right here. And what we're doing this time is that, whoops is this exercise, exercise two, comments and pound characters. And if you click on that link, it'll actually take you to right here. Now, um, the idea here is that when you create a program, you can put comments in, and comments are lines that don't run. They're ignored by the uh, computer when it's running the program, but they allow you to put in explanations of what things are, and that's really important if you want to be able to look at something again and tell what it is. Also, it allows you to enter more than one version of a command and then uh, what's called commenting out the ones that you don't want at a, at a moment. So you can try variations on it without actually deleting or changing the other ones. It's a, it's a handy way of, of experimenting. And all we have to do is this very short little bit of typing. And I'm going to put this one up in the top corner here. And what I've got down here is I've typed the whole thing in already. But what we have is this is our first line. He says, a comment. This is so you can read your program later. Please note it's got the pound sign in front of it. And as he explains, that can also be called a hashtag um, or a hash mark. Uh, he calls it an octothorpe, which is in fact a typographical name for it. Be and the reason he uses that is because there's regional variations in what this sign is called. Um, that's a variation that's not used anywhere on a regular basis, but it is one that is valid everywhere. Anyhow, the octothorpe if you want to, or the pound sign, or the hash. Um, and what that does is it creates a comment. Now watch what happens. If I take that comment out just for a moment, you see that my code changed colors. That's because uh, when you tell, for instance, Text Wrangler or some other uh, IDE, Interactive Development Environment, that you're dealing, for instance, with a Python file, it colors things according to what they are, and it's expecting a command here right now. But I'm, um, I'm going to put the, the, uh, the, the pound sign back in, and now it puts it in gray because it's a comment. By the way, the colors that you get are going to depend to a fair amount on how you have things set up. Let me just show you very quickly. If I'm in here in Text Wrangler, I can just go to um, Preferences. And you see a lot of this is going to just depend on how you, what colors you have chosen. And so that's that's not a big deal. But the point is it, it does make them different. And you can tell that this one right here is a comment also. And so when it runs the command, it's going to ignore that one completely. It's like it's not there, but it's there for our benefit. This, on the other hand, print, I could have code like this, that will print, and the part that's after it with the with the, um, with the pound will be ignored. I'm gonna, I actually should have a second space there. It's, it's good for him to have two spaces before the pound and then one after, but that's, that's pretty trivial. And then I have a couple of other things here that uh, this is a command that I could run. You see, if I ran like that, it's a print line. But because I have the comment in there, you see, it, it, it would print, this won't run. Well, obviously it will run if I don't have it commented out, but now I've commented it out and I've got that. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run this over here in my terminal. Remember, what we're doing in Text Wrangler is writing the scripts. We're writing the instructions, but it's not where we run the instructions. We run them in the terminal on a Mac or PowerShell on a PC. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm going to uh, take this command here, and which is saved in this file. So this is a folder on my computer, and you see if I uh, just click on it, there's the text. This is the quick view thing. And you can see there's stuff that's commented and stuff that's not commented out. And what I need to do is I need to open up that file here in terminal and run it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to tell it where the file is. I'm going to back up just a little bit here. And I've got it here under scripts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my terminal because right now it's going to look for things in my root folder. BP is the name of my computer. And then the colon and then the tilde, the squiggly line, indicates my current folder, which for me 
is uh, is BART, is my home folder on my Mac. Uh, this right here, the BART with the dollar sign is just the prompt and the blinking thing is the cursor. I need to tell it which folder my things are in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do CD, and then the cool trick, and this works on both uh, Windows and Macs, is I'm gonna take the folder here and I drag it in and drop it. And you see, because this is nested several layers in to what I've got, and I've got stuff with more than one. Oh, by the way, this is an interesting one right here. Do you see this? It's got this, it's got a backslash there. And what it's doing there is that's called escaping a character. It's because I have a space in that. You see, if I click on this right here, see I have spaces in that file name. Normally the way you would deal with that is by putting that folder name in parentheses, or excuse me, in quote marks and it would treat it as a single thing. But another option is to escape the character by putting a backslash and it tells the computer, don't read this as a space, read it as sort of this symbol um, and, and treat it literally. Anyhow, all I gotta do is I did, I typed in CD in a space, I dragged this folder in, I'm gonna hit return, and now you can see that scripts is my active folder. So this is scripts right here. Um, and there's the scripts. What I'm gonna do now is I just type the word Python in lowercase. The terminal in Unix is case sensitive, so make sure it's all lowercase. Then I'm gonna type the name of the file. In this case, it's ex for exercise 02. Um, Z doesn't put in leading zeros. I do so things sort correctly, and especially on Windows, this is important. Anyhow, so this is my command. I hit enter, and there you go. You see that it ignored this line that was commented out, it ignored this line that was commented out, it ignored this line with nothing in it. In this one, it only printed the stuff that was not co commented out. That means it only prints up to here. It prints this part, but ignores this part that's after it. It ignored both of these lines because they're commented out and it printed this last line. So it's a lot of explanation for getting only two lines, but commenting is a really important feature to explain your code both to yourself to other people who might read it, and also to give you a way of easily experimenting with variations on your code. Anyhow, that's it for exercise two. Hope that helps.